on guys, it's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Sunday. That's right, it is the end of the weekend. We are getting very excited. We do know that sometimes Sunday night into Monday morning, we do see some massive Bitcoin spikes. Well, Currently, if we have a look right here, you do notice there is a lot of green right now. Bitcoin is over $8,400, up 0.85%. However, you can see right now, we are currently struggling very, very much so to uh, basically break above some of this key resistance. You can see we hit around $8,439, but I would not be surprised if we see a massive, massive Bitcoin movement by the end of today. In fact, if you watched yesterday's video, I gave you guys some of those key levels to look at, but we're going to talk about it right now because as we speak, Bitcoin is trying to pump. So we're going to talk about the price short term, obviously. And I also want to get into some fundamentals as well and show you guys why Bitcoin is absolutely unstoppable. And I do believe we're going to be seeing a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin sooner than later. And yes, I still do think that a one million dollar Bitcoin is possible. And if that sounds good to you, well, you know what to do. Also, if you're not subscribed to the Crypto Zombie channel, well, what are you waiting for? Because if you guys watched yesterday's video, we were basically saying Bitcoin is winding up for a massive move. And, uh, you know, currently it looks like we are trying to push above some of these levels. So we'll see how it plays out. You know, the whales could have some of their games to play. But that being said, let's dive in. Let's have a look. Oh, and of course, today is the last day for the Ledger Nano uh, S. I forgot to totally mention that. All you got to do is drop a comment on literally any video throughout the course of the week and you are eligible. Now you're noticing Bitcoin dominance has gone up 0.1%. People are getting a little bit excited, right? They're starting to kind of hedge back into Bitcoin in case Bitcoin does have the big move that we are expecting currently. Now, we do have some coins up today. Altcoins are taking an opportunity to pump while Bitcoin is currently trying to figure out what it wants to do. You could see Centrality, Dentacoin, Bytecoin, Coin, Doge, Synthetic, Ren, MCO, Basic Attention, Factum, and 0x all doing quite well. However, Bitcoin volume, as you can see right here, $99 million. So you know what happens. Oh, we just now we're up a little bit more. But so you know what happens on the weekends when we have very, very low volume. OK, and, you know, well, let's actually let's see. Let's see what we're doing right now. Yeah. See, look, we're still trying to push up. So let's have a look at the charts. Currently, we've been basically bouncing between this 100 weekly moving average and the 21 exponential on the weekly, which is good. We haven't really fallen below that seven thousand six hundred dollar level. In fact, we keep sort of hitting that seven point seven level, which some people are considering to be the bottom. However, if we look right here, you do notice that we are getting closer to the end of this resistance coming down this green line and also. So this yellow resistance or this yellow support coming up. Now we know that Bitcoin usually doesn't get to the end of these, right? It usually fills around 70% or so, maybe 80%. And then it usually tries to have a massive, massive breakout. And currently you can see that's kind of what Bitcoin is trying to do right now. So you can see essentially the crypto hamster over here says that Bitcoin will either go above the previous trading zone and 23.6% FIB where a lot of short stops are concentrated or Bitcoin will go below the previous trading zone and 61.8% Fibonacci where a lot of the long stops are concentrated. So basically we could go either way, but let's dive in and let's have a look and let's really see what's happening right now. And this is why I am convinced that we're going to have an explosive move within the next 24 hours. And the reason is look at how close these Bollinger Bands are right here. In fact, the distance between them is looking very similar to what happened here just before we had the massive dump. And I know what you're saying. Well, that's not a good thing. It's looking the same. No, it's not the same this time. The difference is we were actually below the basis. Do you see this pink line right here? Today, we are actually above it. In fact, you can see we had some difficulty closing above it yesterday. And today, we had absolutely no problem. So this is signaling short-term bullishness to me. Obviously, we need to get above this basically 200 daily moving average, which is sitting roughly at around that $8,700 level. But if we are able to break above the 200 daily and get above the 8.8K, well, I mean, the sky is the limit, guys. Essentially right here, what I really want to see is us get above that 8.8K. And the reason is because of this lack of basically volume right here. You could see after the 8.8 level, 
The next level, after the 9.1 sort of bottom of the triangle, which still doesn't have a lot of volume, is $9,460. Now, I'm not saying we're gonna hit that level today, but I am saying that if we can break above this 200 daily and the 8.8, .8, well then the next stop is most likely $9,460. So we could be looking for that explosive move. You can actually see right here, zooming in, we have gotten up to that $8,439 level right Right now so definitely keep your eyes on that moving forward but I do want to talk fundamentally about Bitcoin as well because it is fun every day to just chart and try to scalp trade and put in longs and shorts guys by the way if you are actually looking to trade this okay you would want to wait for some of those levels. Obviously, like a key confirmation getting above the 8,443 uh, would be pretty good. And then I'd want to see us get around above that 8,450. But um, like I said, guys, hopefully by the time this video comes out, we're not to the moon. But, you know, 10 years ago today, 5,050 Bitcoin were sold for $5 in the first market transaction for Bitcoin. Today, that Bitcoin would be worth... $42.1 million, which is an astronomical increase of 838 million percent. Why would you not want to own at least one Bitcoin? I have absolutely no idea. And I just want to show you this chart, and this is going to blow your mind because look at the date. This came out December 19th of 2014, and it is unbelievable how much Bitcoin has actually followed the logarithmic non-linear regression, which we use very frequently on this channel. And you can see the daily weighted price right here. And look at how it just followed that trend perfectly. And interestingly enough, if we actually follow this up, you know, to about 2019, where we are right now, it actually is sitting slightly above the 10K level, right? It's actually sitting around, but actually it's sitting closer to the $50,000 level. So you have to ask yourself, currently, Bitcoin does tend to fall under, you know, the line, and then it retraces back above and below and above. In fact, if we have a look over here at the stock to flow, you could see that interestingly enough, Bitcoin is sitting, if you look at this black line, right around the $8,000 level, which is basically where we are right now. So the interesting thing is all of these charts are playing out and you can't deny, you know, something that's basically, you know, five years old is still holding up today. And the reason for this is because Bitcoin is a non-correlated asymmetric asset. It is probably the scarcest uh, asset on planet Earth, only 21 million, right? But you know what, though? I do talk about that a lot on the channel. Let's see what we're doing. Let's see what we're doing. Oh, we're, we're trying to pump. We're trying to pump, guys. Keep your eye on this level. Um, but you know what? Why don't we just give it over to Tim Draper and uh, let him pretty much go into why Bitcoin has so much more value than just, uh, you know, something you could pump and dump on the weekends, right? He says, why Bitcoin is better than national currencies. And by the way, I want to give a shout out to the Bitcoin of Crypto Street. Thank you for this video and for everyone that's interested. Uh, definitely check him out. He does a lot of these little news clips and stuff. But today, this is what I want to play. Most currencies uh, were started just because people trusted them. It was like the promise of gold or started out being shells and you know, then it was gold and then it was the promise of gold. And then it was a promise that the government would back you up, which is a little less of a promise. Well, and that was a given government and that government was tied to a geographic territory. All of a sudden we have a currency that is not tied to a government and not tied to a geographic territory. Well, that frees us because governments have always uh, used that currency to control us to, in some ways, keep, uh, keep controls over that currency. Well, this frees us. We can, we can operate across border much easily. We can move money across border much easily, much more easily. And, um, and we reduce the friction significantly. You know, you know, you wonder why are those banks so big and those bankers all so rich? Why are they all dressed so well? Well, it's because two and a half to 4% of every transaction you ever do is picked up by the uh, credit card company and the bank gets the bulk of that. Um, that would go away. And so you do see the, the banks feeling threatened here, and for good reason, because if you use Bitcoin instead of dollars, you, the banker doesn't control your Bitcoin, he controls your dollars. So I think you have this new opportunity for a currency that is, is frictionless, not no two and a half to 4%, transparent, uh, everybody can see exactly where it goes, so you keep perfect records. Uh, it is uh, open, it's cross-border, so you can use it anywhere, you can go from one country to another, pull down your Bitcoin and everything's fine. Uh, and, and it's a great store of value, but it's also gonna be faster than the Visa network. So this is gonna be one of those things where it's like, it's a sea change. There is new technology and it is better, faster, cheaper than anything else out there. We're gonna move that way. And governments have to figure out how they're gonna adapt to not controlling everybody through the currency.
So I think what they're pretty much realizing at this point is that it's not gonna go away. Pandora's box has been opened. It's inherently better than any fiat system we've ever had. In fact, gold 2.0, Let's be realistic, Bitcoin is actually a lot better than gold. Now, I know where you're gonna go with this, okay? We can use gold in watches and jewelry and things of that nature, but I mean, are you really gonna lug around a giant sack of gold with you everywhere you go, shave some off on the counter? By the way, that guy looks really, really excited to be talking to Tim Draper right now, but that being said, you know, where do we go from here? How do we get that adoption? Well, you can see Chris Marzalik over here from basically crypto.com. He says there isn't a single silver bullet that can be used to gain users. Improving the product, he insists, is the only way to keep customers happy. And this is one of the biggest problems that I have is that whole, oh, it's not Satoshi's vision. Guys, you're not going to get the next hundred million users into Bitcoin by having them go through a 10 step process, figuring out how to set this up and do this and do that, right? No, they're used to basically basically losing their password, calling up the bank and going, hey, can I reset it if I just give you my birthday, my social security number, right? No, that, does, that doesn't happen with Bitcoin. You lose your keys, you lose your funds forever, right? So you see over here, he says there's a very small number of well-designed products out there. Technology needs to be invisible. Users, especially if you're talking about mass market adoption, should not be bothered with private keys, writing them down on a piece of paper, hiding it in a safety you know, deposit box. He insisted that we have to do better if we want to achieve the dream of a billion people using crypto. I absolutely agree. I think it is our responsibility to educate, but also to create those user interfaces that are just as simple that everyone else is already using. You know, when you go to open an app on your phone, you don't have to like think about your private key and everything else. No, you just click it and it opens, right? And we need it to be that simple moving forward. And that's actually going to bring me to my next point, which is why you are seeing a lot of these blockchain events springing up. And they're not just about like ICOs and stuff. It's actually about technology. It's actually about advancements. You know, you can see right here, um, Eurasia Block Summit in Istanbul, that's coming up very soon. This is actually by Huobi. For example, you can see they have uh, uh, Kemmer Partners is bringing the first annual Eurasia to Istanbul, Turkey. Now, Turkey is a place that we've also seen recently. Um, we've, we've had the OTC volume spiking as well. So you've seen the need, the interest, right? That almost desperation for something better than what they're already dealing with. You could see Turkish government officials will be there, like uh, the president of the presidential finance office, Professor Dr. Goxel Asan and leaders of the crypto industry, such as Meltem Demiris, CSO uh, from CoinShares. You can check her out. And Professor Emin Gunsir, who I also follow on Twitter. Um, oh, by the way, guys, Block Show Asia 2019 Singapore. I'm going to be there. So hopefully you guys can come hang out and check that out. But I'll drop this article below for you guys. These are all opportunities to go out, get involved, you know, Consensus, Invest New York. I'll probably be at that one too. But uh, yeah, definitely the closest one is this Eurasia Blockchain Summit. And if you are in the area, Area, definitely check that out. Also, side note, guys, if you're going to the San Francisco Blockchain Week that's coming up uh, at the end of this month, I do have a code if you guys are interested for 15% off. Basically, if you just go over here to tickets, essentially, you'd go to enter promo code, right? And then you would just put in crypto zombie, all one word, apply, and you can see right here. There you go, 15% off, okay? So that is the situation moving forward, but you know how I feel about Bitcoin long-term, guys. Looking at the stock-to-flow ratio, we are exactly where we need to be. This is exactly where we should be. Oh, and by the way, this is putting us at, you know, almost $100,000 Bitcoin by 2021. So like I said, if you're not hodling one, not financial advice, but kind of financial advice. I definitely think you should check that out. So keep your eyes on this, guys. We've gone over some of those key levels. You can see Bitcoin is clearly, clearly trying to break out right now. Um, it has been stomped down a few times. That is why we call it the resistance. But that being said, guys, definitely be safe out there. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to see a big move by, by tomorrow, maybe even by the time you're watching this video. So... Thank you so much once again for coming back to the channel, guys. My name is K 